Now, you may not want to admit this, but are you feeling a little puppy regret? Maybe you're wondering if you've made a big mistake. Well, I don't know you personally, but I've worked with enough students with new puppies. I think I know what you're going through. And I've got some good ideas on what can help. Michelle here with How to Train a Dream Dog. Now I often meet new puppy owners who've been planning ahead for this new puppy for quite a while. They studied breeds, did research on good breeders or rescues, and maybe even got to pick the puppy from the litter. Sometimes the longer you have to wait to get your puppy, the higher your expectations are. Then you get your puppy home and he is so cute and everything is fine. Oh, until it's not. Here are the concerns I hear most often from my students. Does this sound familiar? I want to be able to go to the gym or go out with my friends again. Oh, I get off of work and I'm tired, but the puppy has a lot of energy right when I want to relax. I can't leave the house because the puppy panics every time I'm gone. I'm bothering my neighbors with all the barking and the crying. Mm. I am a chew toy and I have the wounds to prove it. I'm guessing that some of those could have been spoken by you. Maybe all of them? All right, let's talk about some things that can help. I've got seven tips for you on what you can do to feel better and get your life back, or at least some of it. And I've got some good info on how to know if puppy life just isn't for you. Tip number one, give it time. Now your new puppy is adjusting to a new life. He is a different species, trying to live in your human world, and he doesn't understand what you want from him. He's just acting the way his brain and instincts tell him to, and he doesn't know that it's not what you want. Keep in mind that in the first year of a dog's life, they're developing and growing as much as seven years in a human's life. And think about how different a newborn baby is from a seven-year-old. It's like they aren't even the same kid. Now your puppy is gonna go through all kinds of growth in a much shorter time. This means that teeth will ache, joints will be sore from growing, brains probably feel chaotic to a puppy. So I want you to adjust your expectations on how much your puppy will act like an adult dog. You'll get there, but it's gonna take time. Don't expect perfection from you or your puppy. Give both of you just a little bit of grace to muddle through this challenging time together. All right, tip number two, work on this with training. Now, your puppy is acting on instinct. He's not purposely trying to make your life difficult. Potty accidents on the floor are to be expected. Biting is natural. <laughs> you smell good too. Chewing on the furniture is very rewarding for your puppy. All of these things are normal puppy activities, and it's up to you to teach him what you want him to do instead. Now this means being consistent with taking him outside to go potty, giving him alternative chew toys, and rewarding him when he engages with them. Hear me well on this next one, all right? You cannot rely on time alone for these behaviors to go away. Yes, you need time for the puppy's brain to mature and develop, but you must accompany that with training. Did you hear that? to teach him what you want him to do. Tip number three, crate training. If you haven't started crate training, you're missing out on some really beneficial skills. Crate training helps the puppy get good rest for that growing body and brain. Crate training keeps him safe and keeps your belongings safe and free from destruction. Crate training done in a positive way can help your puppy relax when he needs to sleep and when you need to sleep too. Young puppies need up to about 20 hours of sleep a day, but they don't often get that if they're left out to roam around the house. Do yourself and your puppy a favor and establish the crate as a safe and comfortable place for him to sleep. And if you're struggling with that, I can help you with the crate training mini course. The link is below. Tip number four, get support so you can take time for yourself. It's good for the puppy to experience new people too. And if your puppy isn't ready to be home alone, Find a pet sitter who will come to be with him at your home for a few hours so you can get a break. Enlist the neighbor's teenager or check out rover.com or WAG for some screen dog walkers. Now they don't have to walk, they can just hang out and do some playing or enrichment activities to burn off some of that puppy's energy. This won't be a forever thing, but for now, when your puppy is most needy, it's probably the time when you need a break the most too. Tip number five. Get on a schedule, especially with sleep. This is one of the first things I suggest people work on when they bring a puppy home. Start establishing a schedule right away. It's gonna take some time for all of it to fall into place, but start with regular feeding times. From there, you're gonna probably start to see more of a pattern with potty breaks. 
Dogs are more active at dusk and dawn and sleep more throughout the day. Notice the times during which your dog is more alert and attentive and when he tends to be more sleepy. Build on those normal energy levels into a schedule that works for you. Now, just remember that at the end of the day, when you want to relax on the couch, your puppy will naturally be more alert. Don't try to fit a square peg into a round hole by asking him to relax at that time. But if you do some structured play and training sessions, it'll be good for both of you. Tip number six, understand puppy development. Now this means knowing what phases your dog will go through and what's to come. Did you know that in the early weeks that your puppy is home with you, he'll be most receptive to learning new things and forming a positive opinion about them. He's gonna also be naturally compliant, but just know that both of those have a bit of an expiration date. So don't feel like your training is all done once he knows how to sit and comes when called. Around the five to six month mark, your puppy will reach adolescence and you're gonna soon see a whole new level of energy and curiosity. Now the good news is that his attention span will be better and you're gonna know his pattern a lot more. So continue training and it will be very effective. And if you need to know more about what's to come with your puppy, developmentally, this video here is gonna be a great one for you to watch. Now, knowing what behaviors might be coming down the line can help you prevent bad habits from forming. Are you taking good notes? Are you loving this info? I hope so. My team and I love to put these videos together for you each week. Show us the love by subscribing to the channel, sharing this with a friend, or giving us a super thanks. On to tip number seven. I also want you to do everything you can to understand canine body language. Now he's a different species and he speaks a different language than you do, but you're his teacher and guide. So you need to work hard at understanding him. You can learn more about canine body language in my online course and by watching your puppy carefully during play and training sessions. Keeping a log of that schedule is gonna also help you pick up on patterns of behavior better too. All too often humans who don't understand canine communication and body language misinterpret their dog's signals. And humans think their dogs are just being stubborn and upsetting their owners on purpose. This is the farthest thing from the truth. Even if it feels personal, it's really not though. That's why we encourage you to learn more about how your dog thinks and learns and communicates. If all those sound like good places to start, but you're just having a little trouble putting it into action, consider getting some support from a professional. <laughs> As part of my online course, we have a pro level that contains extra guidance and support. It's great for new puppy owners who are struggling with regret or feeling overwhelm and uncertainty. Now we can guide you through the course in a way that works for you at a pace where you're gonna see results and minimize that frustration. We can teach you how to read your puppy's body language and how to know if he's getting the proper rest. Now, the thing that most students love about the pro level is how personal it is. We answer your questions, knowing your situation and your dog. And we get to know more about your struggles. We review your specific training videos and your dog's schedule that you submit to us. It's like having a dog trainer in your back pocket. So if you're ready for some help, check out the course with the link below. But what if you've tried all that and it's simply not a good match? How do you know if you've made a mistake and having a puppy in your life is not the best plan? Well, here are a few signals that having a puppy isn't best for you. Number one, when your quality of life is steadily decreasing. Number two, when you're stressed to the point of sickness or you can't think clearly. Number three, when you can't meet your puppy's needs. Or number four, you're experiencing feelings of extreme resentment, including mental health degradation. Now, if you've come to that conclusion, you're gonna get no judgment from me. There are times when I've had to gently suggest to my students that they consider a different home for the dog. There's two of you in this canine human relationship and in order for it to work, both of you need to be healthy and committed. If you just aren't up for what it takes to have a puppy, it's best to find someone who is. Otherwise, you'll both suffer for the next 10 to 15 years. The bottom line here is that you need to do what's best for you and your dog. And if that means doubling down and getting more support from professionals like me, then do it. If that means finding a new home that's a better fit for your dog, then that's okay too. Whatever you do, if you're doing it with the best interest of both you and the dog as a priority, it's going to be okay. I just wanna make sure you know that you're not the only person who feels this way. It's very normal to have regret or the blues when bringing home a new puppy. It doesn't mean you're a bad person or that you're not cut out for puppy ownership. Now, I do have to be clear though. This isn't a free pass to rehome a dog and then immediately go find another that you think will be a better fit. 
If you're struggling with this puppy now, the likelihood that you'll feel the same with another puppy is very high. Just take a deep breath. Implement the suggestions I've given you in this video, and if you need more help, we can figure this out together. In the comments, tell me, are you struggling with a puppy behavior that I mentioned in this video? We would love to help you.